All right, what is up, chat? Welcome to a very unexpected video where uh, I'll be pretty much just introducing you guys to Murder Drones Pummel Party. So this video is of course a little bit different because it's not unusual force, but uh, in one of my many community posts, I said that maybe I could possibly expand the showcases towards other games. And because of that, I thought that maybe I could first make a one-time video uh, introducing you know you guys to the game and whether or not you guys actually end up enjoying it I'll do more I'll experiment and stuff like that but uh, yeah we'll see how this video cooks and yeah let's just get started this game is basically a day by daylight type of game so you have your two sides your survivors or your worker drones and then you have the killers um, relatively simple stuff if you play one of those games the worker drones are supposed to escape they complete tasks and Basically, they, they beat the game by surviving. Um, then the killers, relatively simple to explain as well. Uh, you just have to kill all the survivors and then you win. This game, I would say this game is also relatively new because it's been out for roughly like three to four months. Um, so it is very small, of course, because there isn't many murder drone games on Roblox. <laughs> there aren't like <laughs> role playing games. So I would say it deserves a fair chance. Let's talk about the maps a little bit. So currently there's only two maps, which is, I would say, call it the snow area and the mines. Um, first, let's just talk about like what you have to do as a survivor or worker drone. Basically, you have to walk around and collect scrap from crates. Uh, you collect the scrap and then you bring that to the ship to fix it. While you're doing your objectives, there are batteries that you can consume as a worker drone to heal yourself. So if you take in some amount of damage, you can just walk around see if you can find those there's two ships on the map uh to like each corner basically so if you miss one you'll be able to get to the other one if you just cross the map it is a relatively big map so you could get lost a little bit depending on how many players there are in the game um it'll be either less or more so if you have like little to no people it's gonna require less repairs and yeah pretty much you fix it and then after you've completed the thing you just escape and you win pretty simple uh the mines play out similarly to the snow map uh since you have to fix an elevator so you do the same process you start out doing the same process pretty much so you go out of your way you open the crates you get the scrap you fix the elevator uh once you do fix the elevator the lights will turn off you're gonna hear a sound effect and then you have to gather capacitators scattered around the map which are like these things on screen. I'll probably put them right now. Uh, and then you have to bring them to this big room with like a generator thing that has a, a bunch of like claw things on the on each side. And then you walk up to that, you'll get the prompt to put the capacitator there. And you have to put four on each side. Uh, there's four sides, so you have to put four basically in total. And then you just have to escape by uh, going towards one of the two elevators that are also on the map. I guess I should just uh, sh tell you guys about how many killers there are right now. So technically there's four, but three of them are reskins of each other. So technically there's only two. They basically only spawn in their respective maps. So if you get the snow map, uh, you will get N, V, and J. And if you get the mines, you'll get uh, Sin. But first let's talk about the snow killers. In which I'll, uh, real quick, I'm just going to showcase what the controls do. Uh, L, M, B, or your uh, M1, you slash on people with your claws. R, M, B, or your M2 is your stinger. You can sting people up to like three or four times, something like that. But it goes on cooldown after you've swung it a few times already. Your R skill is a pounce. Uh, if you manage to cast someone, which I'm pretty sure you can only catch one person, they get one-shotted. So you have to really time it properly and stuff. Your Q is a temporary sprinting move, so you'll start running once you hit the thing. Your F skill switches your claws to for chainsaws, so you do extra damage and hit a lot, so they're very useful. And then your G skill lets you track people's footsteps if they are nearby. You you'll see footmarks on the floor that lead to somewhere, and you can follow those. Uh, next we have the mines, in which we have Sin. So Sin pretty much has the same objective, you just kill the worker drones, uh, but her skills of course are a lot different, so let's just do a quick showcase. Left mouse button 
Yeah, you swing a sword three to four times, which does a lot of damage. Uh, it does go on cooldown though, after you swung it those many times. Your right mouse button, or your M2, is also a stinger type of attack that you can swing six times, roughly. That does a lot of damage. Your R skill is a grab move, so basically uh, you're gonna stand still, and if people are within your little like range thing, you're gonna pull them to you, in which you can just attack them or whatever. You also have your Q skill, that is basically a dash that lets you keep up with people relatively fast. It has a very low cooldown. And then your F skill lets you transform into a randomly customized worker drone, so you can trick people basically. Um, and of course, you get the same speed as a worker drone. Important thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, worker drones actually have some controls themselves. Basically, your middle mouse lets you point at stuff. So you, uh, if you were looking at a crate, you can point at that and it's gonna mark, it's gonna do a ping and everybody on your team can see it. And worker drones can also crouch, but not necessarily hide completely since there's not many spots on the map. And they're, they're also able to just hide inside lockers. Uh, essentially, the E key is for interacting with everything that isn't crouching or um, pointing. So since we reviewed what the killers do roughly, let's just go over the worker drones because I didn't exactly specify what they can do, aside from just doing the objectives. So after a round, uh, usually you'll get an amount of chips and XP, and worker drones can use this to customize their avatar. You know, you can change the color of your lights, you can put on hats, boots, uh, shirts, whatever. But uh, you can also use this to buy tools that can help you uh, in whichever map you're in. So first up, we have the pickaxe. Pretty much, when you press G, you're gonna pull out your pickaxe, and if you get attacked within that frame, you're gonna counter and, uh, and stun the killer for a few seconds, roughly. Next up, we have the door. So the door can only be placed in specific locations. You'll see that uh, when you press G, you'll get like a red box. And once you find the right spot where you're allowed to put the door down, it'll extend to like a green line, basically. Anyway, these doors, uh, when you put one down, it's gonna automatically close. And if you get close to the door, you can see a little like um, screen that shows you the HP, basically. Because the killers can damage the door and eventually break it down. So you have to be real careful about that. And of course, you can just open and close your door whenever you want. Uh, as well as your teammates, although they cannot close the doors. They can just force open the door if uh, they need to escape or something like that. <laughs> also, the thing I forgot to mention. Sin can hack the door with the solver. So if she aims the thing at the door, she's going to force it open for like few seconds and you're not going to be able to control the door. Eventually the door does close by itself, but uh, yeah, something important uh, for you guys to know. And lastly we have the car battery. It is pretty much just a little like healing pack that you bring along with you, although when you put it down uh, it's gonna be there until you die or uh, it's used up. Basically, it just acts like a pack of five batteries and then it disappears. And I guess it's relatively useful because uh, you can also just leave it there for your teammates to use. But uh, yeah, honestly, that is all that I wanted to talk about. But uh, yeah, hope this interests you guys and all that stuff. And if it does well, maybe I'll come back to this do like an update video or whatever, who knows. Uh, but uh, yeah. See you guys next week with the showcases and goodbye.